What's up, my dudes? No, we're not selling like <laughs> I'm Zelf. <laughs> He wants me to say, and I'm the shelf, and I told him, that's not a joke, we're not doing that. Comedy's dead. <laughs> here we all are. Welcome, hi, glad to have you here. Get a cup of tea, join us, come listen to us ramble. We're going to talk today about free will, because a lot of people will ask us if we think free will exists. It's something we kind of like, sort of touch on in certain videos, but we've never really gone into our views on it in depth. So I guess we're just going to chat about our current view of free will. Um, I'm a bit sick, so apologies for my voice and the fact that I'm out of breath right now. So there are basically two <laughs> schools of thought, aren't there? <laughs> well, there are and there aren't. Um, the first thing I would say before we jump into this like debate is I feel like most of most of the discussion about free will feels like semantics to me. Mm, yeah. You know? That's what I felt listening to Sam Harris and Dan Dennett. Yeah. I was like, y'all are saying the same thing. Yeah, it's just like so conceptualized that it just becomes like, it's just words at a certain point. So enjoy this word vomit <coughs> at you. We're just going to add some more words to it. And a few coughs. And a few coughs. Look at working on a sick day. Wow, no sick days here at Zelf. Yeah, we're like post Please office. Please donate. <laughs> <laughs> so I love this quote. I, it's not by Alan Watts, but he says it in one of his talks. He's, it goes, it's a little limerick. He says, There once was a man who said, Damn, it certainly seems that I am not a creature, or a creature that moves in determinate grooves. I'm not even a bus, I'm a tram. <coughs> Should I say that again in one take? <coughs> <coughs> Coughing is kind of the, the new applause, isn't it? <laughs> I think that was fine. Okay. Okay, so explain. Um, it's this idea that, um, we don't have free will <laughs> is what it comes down to. Cool. And the sooner you accept that, the better. I think, well, we basically have the same view of free will. Um, but the way I see it is that, I mean, obviously we're all the products of our genetics and conditioning throughout life. Um, and like a dog doesn't have free will. Like... No other animal in the animal kingdom has free will. We're just ruled by our, like, impulses, like, the way we're wired. And they say that you, humans, we, we like to think we make decisions, but it's actually that our brains just make up the reasons why we do things. Like, we just do things. Yeah. And the choices that we have available to us, because religion talks a lot about, um, like, right and wrong, and it does that with kind of this attitude that you can just choose right or wrong which number one assumes that you know what right and wrong is and it's like that is so dependent on every situation and your view of what's right and what's wrong is so dependent on your upbringing which is why there's so many different views in the world about what's right or wrong um but religion just relies on the idea of choice like the or free will basically that we just choose whether to be good or bad or whatever but even the choices well, first of all, the choices we even have available to us are determined by our life situations. So, like, I can choose whether I want to eat Frosted Flakes or Cocoa Puffs because I can afford both. It's not an Damn. issue. Damn. I know. Big spender. But, like, not even is, the Malto meal brand. <laughs> this is a dumb example because, like, cereals are the same price. But if you were somebody who could only afford Frosted Flakes and you couldn't afford Cocoa Puffs, then, like, you don't really have that choice, you know? And it's just kind of like that with everything on a much bigger scale. Like Sam Harris says this, and I really like it. It sounds like he's summing up what you've been saying is that we don't... Uh, I'll, I'll read it. I wrote it down. He says, you can, you can do what you decide to do, but you cannot decide what you will decide to do. Right. Yeah. That's so <laughs> true. So it's like, you don't... You didn't have any choice about kind of like where you ended up or where you got started in life or all the factors that led you making this decision about Cocoa Puffs or Frosted Flakes. Yeah. But ultimately, you perceive the ability to yeah. choose between Frosted Flakes and Cocoa Puffs. Because that's the thing, like, the decisions we make are completely determined by, like, everything that's happened up to us in our lives up to those point, that point. Like, if you've had Cocoa Puffs a bunch of times and it's been so good every single time and you've had Frosted Flakes a few times and they've been kind of eh then it's basically like you're going to choose Cocoa Puffs. Mm -hmm. And the idea that comes from Eastern philosophy, which both Sam Harris and Alan Watts and others ascribe to, is this idea that our thinking minds, so our, scientifically speaking, 
your brain makes your body makes decisions before your brain tells you yeah. what's going on. So we perceive that our thinking mind is making decisions. Oh, I'm going to do this today. When in fact, your body has already made the decision, it's already going for it, and then it's narrating to you its justifications for its decisions, which is kind of trippy to think about, yeah. but that's just what's happening. And we can, uh, there's a great uh, article that I've sent a few people after we talked about it in a video, and we can post it in the, um, beneath where they, where they share the scientific study where they did that. Um, and so the Eastern philosophy comes in, Taoism, Buddhism, of recognizing that you don't really have free will, that the talking mind is, is just kind of giving its best narrational guess as to what's happening. Um, and it's learning how to not associate with the thoughts and just do what your body would naturally do yeah. in a situation. I think people will also be fearful of this idea that we don't have free will, or they feel threatened by the thought that we don't have as much choice as we think and I think that ha has harmful consequences in life like for example every time there's like a mass shooting or something and the media will report about the person who shot a bunch of people and talk about how he had a really troubled childhood and all that stuff there'll be a bunch of people I see on Twitter that will be like I had a troubled childhood and I never did that and like there'll be all these people that are so resistant to the idea that his troubled upbringing like led him to do this and I think it's because it's scary to because it makes us feel like we have no control like the idea that all of us can choose good or bad is so much more comforting because then it almost feels like we can just sort of sh shame people into doing the right thing or you know mm. stuff like that whereas I think the danger in believing that free will is more existent than it is is it means we don't solve the root problem of something like like I don't know white young men in America committing mass shootings a lot like because if we act like it's a choice then there's nothing we can do about it we can't just say to them like choose better because we already the society already taught them their whole lives not to murder so it's like it almost the problem is is that we're not spanking kids yeah, these days spank them harder. <laughs> whereas if we were willing to accept that like you know trauma in childhood leads to violent tendencies later on then we'd be more we'd be addressing the root problem more so I think people people are scared of the idea that we don't have free will or that our choices are more limited than we realize because it makes them feel so powerless but I actually think it's empowering and it gives us more power to stop bad things from happening another quote from Sam Harris losing a belief in free will has not made me fatalistic in fact it has increased my feelings of freedom yeah. my hopes fears and neuroses seem less personal and in personal and indelible. There is no telling how much I might change in the future, just as one wouldn't draw a lasting conclusion about oneself on the basis of a brief experience of indigestion, one needn't do so on the basis of how one has thought or behaved for vast stretches of time in the past. A creative change of inputs to the system, learning new skills, forming new relationships, adopting new habits of attention may radically transform yeah. one's life. And that's um, uh, kind of goes along with what you were saying in, in our sort of take on free will is that once you realize that it doesn't exist in the way some people think and you realize that like, okay, I'm the product of my circumstance that opens the door to like adjusting your circumstance. Yeah. To, so if you just look at your brain as an, as an al a really complex algorithm yeah. and you have these various inputs that are, and mm -hmm. factors that are changing what your outcome is, once you realize that you say, oh, I just need to change some of the factors. Yeah. So, Although even the decisions you make about what factors you'll change are also the product of your experiences. Right. So, like, so everything I'm, is the so, product yeah, of your yeah, experiences. Yeah. Um, but there is something to be saying, I think like, um, so I'm not just like, oh, I don't have free will, so I just like go. It's kind of like yeah. that compatibilist idea yeah. that um, even though free will doesn't exist in the objective sense, we still have the perception of choice yeah. and you can make choices to influence the way that your your program yeah. operates. That's why when people ask us if we believe free will exists, we're like, ah, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. And it's really like just a semantics thing because it's like, it isn't necessarily useful to just be like, um, you know, it doesn't exist, so like do whatever because the free will existing or not doesn't mean do whatever. We've had this conversation so many times and there's so many times when we just put it so succinctly. Mm -hmm. And then with this, it feels like we've given like such a long explanation and I just always want it to be like short and snappy and mm. people to just like get it. Like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, 30 second kind video. of. Hi, you don't have free will, but what you do have is the ability <laughs> to influence your programming. I always...
think of free will as well as a spectrum in a sense because I think personally the more understanding you have of your own conditioning the more free will you have because like so many people just go through life um, making choices completely like dependent on the, what they were told to do and what society has told them to do and I think anytime you can like recognize that conditioning and be able to say, anytime you can recognize it, you then have the. Bless you, oh, bless you, Huey. Anytime you can recognize conditioning in yourself and what has made you the way you are, you're able to say, okay, well, is that a standard sure. I want to keep or something I want to reject? And it's like you don't really get the chance to decide whether to keep doing that or not until you can recognize it. So, like, there's a lot of things we've realized that we did that were just because, like, society told us to or whatever told us to that we now don't do or like we don't have those attitudes anymore but if we hadn't realized oh we only do these things because of all these influences that told us to we wouldn't have been able to have that same level of choice so like mm. our choices are limited by how much awareness we have about our own conditioning yes, so essentially what i'm it. saying is i think whether or not free will exists like i like to think of it as a spectrum and your best chance of it existing is just being as aware of your own conditioning and the factors that are making you do and think what you do and think as possible. Amen. What do you guys think about free will? Let us know in the comments. Should we do a thumbnail? Yeah. <laughs> Something to think about. <laughs> we should do stock photos. I think we can make a big sale in stock we photography. We can make a killing doing stock photos. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video and these kind of chatty videos about concepts generally then give this video a thumbs up and leave a nice comment if you want to donate to Zelf then we'll leave a link to do that in the description box um, Tana sells shirts they're really cool we've got some really cool things coming down the pipeline we really have <laughs> we're so jazzed about it um, we've got a musical number yeah we've got a musical on number. its way we were hoping to film that today. The reason we did this video is actually because our, our, our official cameraman us. is not in town. But um, we will do that soon. And then we also have a uh, another little surprise coming that I've been working on for a long time. Oh, yeah. And I'm happy soon to be releasing. Sometimes you do this really quiet voice when we're filming that I think you want to try and avoid. Do I need to project a little yeah, bit more? Yeah, it's not as engaging. Okay, sorry like for making... Like every YouTuber you watch, especially like Gen Z, YouTubers, they're like shouting all the time. Gen it's Z crazy. It's scary. You know, scary. Like, hey guys, <laughs> welcome. It's like that. Hey everybody. That's like their preferred. I'm just trying to do like ASMR, like hello. <laughs> like is, even um, even like the, like millennial YouTubers will be like bubbly and brighter than normal, mm. but Gen Z, it's like they've been so overstimulated their whole life. Oh. It literally takes shouting to capture their attention. Let's really? talk about that in a video. <laughs> Have you guys even seen ASMR stuff? My friend just showed me this week. It's I like about people, it ages ago. I've been wanting to take a parody one for like years. It, I guess people get physical pleasure from just like little sounds. Do you? I mean, here's the thing is when I watched the video, I felt kind of weird. Like, I feel like I could get into this if yeah. I let it, but I'd need to be like by myself, like yeah. very non judgmental of self. Well, and I don't know. Like, I feel like some people have a sexual response to it, and I don't have like a sexual response. It just feels nice. If it feels nice, we should sexual. do a video. Where we, <laughs> we should do a video where we experiment with ASMR. Okay. We try to get into ASMR. Yeah. We try to orgasm with <laughs> ASMR. Um, Touchless true, orgasm. True story. I have a my grandfather's first wife, not my grandma, just his first wife. She Wait. left the Ow. Mormon Church Ow. and joined an offshoot group called Summum Bonum. <laughs> which is like a Latin phrase that Joseph Smith used once. Summon them and bone them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they like worship in a pyramid here in Salt Lake. And they would have, they would drink this psychedelic wine and have touchless orgies. And that sounds pretty rad. Like that's way cooler than the mainstream. Let us know if you wanted us to try it out. So if any, yeah, if we could try that along with some ASMR. There's a lot of things that... Uh, a lot of avenues we could take this so channel. So many avenues. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. We hope you're good. <laughs>